Schwartz, our RTP program coordinator for the grants unit. Today's workshop will focus specifically on the RTP motorized program. If you are hoping to learn about the RTP non-motorized program, unfortunately, this workshop is not the one for you because eh, we will not be covering that information today, a part of this program. The next anticipated non-motorized grant cycle, if you're wondering, will be in the fall of 2025. For more information on the non-motorized program, please contact the Office of Grants of Local Services, also known as OGALS, or check out their website for more information. All right, before we uh, dive into the presentation, I would like to introduce a couple special people joining us today. First, it's my pleasure to introduce Sarah Miggins, the Deputy Director of the OHMVR Division. Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Matt. Uh, good morning and welcome to our workshop here this morning. We're so pleased to see uh, all of you here from a variety of different agencies across every corner in the state, which obviously demonstrates to all of us here at the OHV division of the need and how competitive uh, these grants are. So we really appreciate your your um, management across the state and leadership and OHV recreation. And I really wish you, you know, the best of success and luck in applying for these funds. And you're in great hands here. We have a remarkable team in our grants unit. Many of uh, them are here with you this morning. And I just encourage you to ask questions, open the dialogue, uh, we want to see you succeed. And again, just thank you so much for taking the time out of uh, your day today to be with us and um, look forward to uh, reading your proposals. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sarah. And the next person I would like to introduce is uh, Jen Grady. Uh, Jen is the grants manager of the OHMVR Division Grants Unit. And she's just passed her year anniversary, so she is now officially one year in. Jen, floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will take the easy route and just say ditto everything Sarah said because she kind of encompassed everything the best we could. So uh, we welcome you all today. We hope you enjoy this workshop. And like Sarah said, um, this is your chance to ask all of the questions that you have about the Recreational Trails Program for those of you that are involved in our uh, GCA program, the Grants and Cooperative Agreements program. This one is a little bit different, so um, make sure you got your notebook, take lots of notes, and I wish you all the best in your application process. All right. Well, thank you, Jen. Uh, we're also very grateful to have you here with us today. The last RTP grant cycle took place in 2021. Uh, for the uh, motorized side, and it was largely attended by agencies familiar with the program. This year, however, we are thrilled to see many new agencies expressing their interest in RTP. This year, RTP funding is particularly crucial for us as a division and uh, for the state of California, as our grants and cooperative agreements program has become highly competitive due to the high demand. Many off-highway vehicle OHV projects went unfunded uh, this upcoming last past grant cycle. So the availability of RTP funds will be instrumental in helping agencies continue to provide OHV recreation opportunities across California. Lastly, before we begin, I want to make sure everyone knows that the presentation is being recorded and will be posted on our website as a resource. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can either hold them until the question slide at the end or feel free to ask them during the presentation in the Teams by typing your question in the chat feature. A staff member will either respond to your comment directly or bring the question to the presenter's attention and will answer it during the presentation. Now that we've covered everything, let's get started with the presentation. Next slide, please. All right, agenda. So today's presentation agenda will focus on a comprehensive overview of the RTP program. The objective of the workshop is to ensure that your agency becomes familiar with the program, understands how it can apply for the upcoming R24 cycle, highlight some of the key differences between uh, differences in the grant administration of the RTP program compared to those that are familiar with our grants and cooperative agreements program. 
We expect this presentation to last around an hour. Uh, during this time, we'll cover quite a bit of information. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat, save them for the end of the presentation. Or if you end up having questions or needing assistance after the presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Division for Assistance, and we'll make sure to provide all our contact information of who to reach out to and where to go. Next slide, please. OK, thank you, Matt. So let's get started with what is RTP? The Recreational Trails Program is a state administered local assistance program of the US Department of Transportation's Federal Highway Administration. The funding is split between Caltrans, the Office of Grants and Local Services, and the OHMVR division, with the Office of Grants and Local Services administering the non-motorized projects and the OHMVR division administering the motorized projects. Because RTP is funded through the Federal Highway Administration, it is important to emphasize that this program is different from our typical grants and cooperative agreements program. While we do administer the grants for RTP, Federal Highways does have the final say regarding the awarding of agencies, payments, and any project changes. As we go through today's presentation, we will be covering more of that. Hey, Maddie, you mentioned in there a funding split amongst three different agencies. What is the funding breakdown between those agencies? Of course, it's a great question. So we have Caltrans receiving 40% of the grant fundings, and then it is split between OGALS and the OHMVR division, with both agencies receiving 30% of funds. And one thing I just want to go along is just to emphasize is that since this is the Federal Highways Program, <laughs> uh, we are learning sometimes the same time as you as new policies and procedures do come out from the federal government. Um, so they do disseminate that information for us and then we do our best to bring it to you. But sometimes things kind of catch us off guard as well. So just as an FYI. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next slide, please. All right, available funding. How much money do we got? So for this year's grant cycle, we have approximately 3.9 million available in funding. That is not the typical amount of funding for RTP cycle. The program typically receives around 1.4 million in federal funding annually through the bipartisan infrastructure law of 2021. We got an additional 1.4 for this grant cycle since we did not offer a grant cycle last year. And the rest of the funds are coming from awarded R21 projects that the grantee decided not to go forward with the project and return the funds. So we've included those funds in this year's grant cycle. So that's how we got to 3.9. What I think makes RTP unique is that there is no minimum or maximum request for funding, except for education projects, which are capped at 5% of federal funding, totaling around $195,000 for this grant cycle. Moreover, all the project types are eligible for a project performance period of up to three years. That's a significant difference from a grants and cooperative agreements program, which restricts trail maintenance or education projects to one year duration. Next slide, please. OK, and here we have our eligible applicants, which include cities and counties, districts, state agencies, federal agencies, and nonprofits with management responsibilities for public lands. So Maddie, when, when, can you clarify what that means for nonprofit with management responsibility for public lands? It's kind of a, a tongue twister on that one. <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, essentially what that means is a nonprofit organization that has an agreement from a landowner providing them rights to work on that land. This means that your nonprofit agency must have an agency letter available prior to the application process. Next slide, please. All right, for those of you familiar with the Grants and Cooperative Regents Program, the RTP project type titles are a little different, but the activities performed are the same. RTP has six different project types. First one is acquisition, which is the uh, purchase or easement of a simple fee title to the property for recreational trails or recreational trails corridor. The next is development and rehabilitation of trails, trail, si trail side, and trailhead facilities. This project type involves developing or fixing, rehabilitating your current OHV facilities. Next is construction of new trails. Um, but there are restrictions we want you to be aware of that must be met for federal applicants. Uh, federal applicants that plan, uh, applicants who are looking to apply for this project type. One is it's permissible under other law. 
Two, necessary and recommended by statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan that is required by the, uh, excuse me, required by the Land Water Conservation Act of 1965 and approved by each federal agency having jurisdiction over affected lands. The next project type is maintenance of existing trails, which is in our GCA program, we call it ground operations. So that's your ground operations project type. Uh, the next one is assessment of trail conditions for accessibility and maintenance. So there is no physical on the ground work needed for this project. Now, RTP does have an option for doing two phase projects where you include this project activity. And once it has been completed, you get, then can conduct the other project types. If your agency is interested in doing that, please let us know because we will need to follow up with Federal Highways about the specifics of how your agency would apply for that since we have never had a two-phase project in RTB before. So we do know that they have the op opportunity for it. We just never really kind of flushed it out how it works with them. So we want to make sure before we go down that route, reach out to us so we can get all the details for you. And the last but not least is education. So this is to develop and disseminate pro, uh, publications and educational programs that promote safety and environmental protection related to trails. This project differs from our GCA program as OHV search and rescue activities are not eligible under the RTP program. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. Before we dive into the application process, I'm just going to do a quick overview of some key points regarding RTP. Um, with RTP, applicants may apply for more than one project type, and each site is considered one project. If your agency is submitting multiple projects, each project is going to have its own application. And lastly, the project performance period can be anywhere from one to three years, and there are no minimum or maximum grant requests with RTP. Next slide, please. All right, so now we're moving on. M Pacific Standard Time. All right, Maddie, tough question for you. What happens if an applicant does not submit their application prior to 5 p.m. on that deadline? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. You'll have to try again our next grant cycle because Olga will be closed. Yeah, Olga's a no fun league. Uh, so yes, at 5 p.m., that is a hard deadline. So the system shuts down automatically and it actually blocks us from actually uh, being able to enter either to make any modifications to applications until a certain designated time after that. So just making sure um, 5 p.m., get it in before then, because uh, unfortunately at that point, the division uh, is not a help of you. Can we cannot make any changes? Our website, uh, we have numerous Olga video tutorials to assist you with completing your application. These videos will be geared towards GCA program. So in them, they will say GCA program, but it will be the same process for RTP. To begin your RTP application, your agency must first submit a project director request in Olga. Without this request, you will not be able to access Olga to create an RTP application. I recommend not waiting until the last minute to complete your RTP application because Olga is unique and sometimes challenging system to navigate. So it's important to give yourself enough time to familiarize yourself with it. And we are definitely here. The division is here to help you with any questions or issues that you're having, any uh, warning, uh, holds or anything like the errors you're getting to help clean it up so that you can be able to submit. But again, uh, if you call us at 440, 445 saying, hey, I got these errors. How do I fix them? You're leaving us very limited amount of time to help you. And our anxiety goes up. Your anxiety goes up. It's just please make sure you start early and give yourself the time. Uh, the RTP application uh, consists of 14 project specific questions, which are detailed in the Recreational Trails Procedural Guide available on our division's website. All project types must answer the same 14 questions. So no matter what you're coming in for, all everybody's in the same group in regards to the questions that they answer. The questions are designed for both motorized and notarized non-motorized projects. So some may not seem directly relevant to your project. Um, each question is uh, evaluated to on a zero to 10 scale. 
allowing your project uh, score to up to 100 points. Uh, applicants will self-assess and score their application, providing supporting information in the narrative box for each question. Lastly, be aware that several questions can lead to disqualification of your agency's project if not answered correctly. So we have question six, seven, and 12 are particularly critical and incorrect responses can result in disqualification. And the following slides will review these questions, explain their significance, and offer tips of how to answer them effectively. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, starting with question number six regarding project user accessibility, this question states, describe how the project will provide access to persons with disabilities in compliance with the Federal Access Board guidelines regarding trail improvements. For acquisition projects, describe the plan for making the trail accessible when it is built. For a trail to be considered fully accessible, no Federal Access Board departures are needed as the entire trail is usable to all population groups, including people with disabilities. The best way to answer this question is by following and citing the Federal Access Board guidelines. There you can see some of the permitted departure methods. We also have an RTP fact sheet available on our division website, which is going to go into greater detail for each of these questions. You can also find a link to the Federal Access Board on our website, also under the Recreational Trails Program page. Next slide, please. Thanks, Maddie. Great tips. Uh, the next question is question seven, access to the project. This question asks your agency to describe access to the project site and or how the project will improve access to trailhead or trails. To better answer this question, the project uh, that can address all four of the points uh, that you see on the screen and also in the procedural guide will be given greater consideration. If your project does not have access, it is ineligible. So again, this question is used by the non-motorized side of the house and the examples provided are more likely not things that would typically be associated with an OHV uh, project area, but do your best to describe how your project provides access to the OHV facilities. Hey, Matt, do you have an example of what an access point would be for an OHV access? So I do. And actually, it's more than likely pretty much the majority of the answer that we're going to get from all our grantees that uh, applicants that submit. It's a parking lot. It's a staging area. It's an area where um, people are able to park their cars and access the trails. And so majority, that's what you guys do have. We do have some urban areas uh, that have some OHV uh, recreation. And so they might have different types of uh, opportunities for people to get to their park. And you would definitely like to state those. It would help you on uh, the consideration of more points in those things. But majority of you just going to stay in parking lot. Next slide, please. Thank you. OK, so our last question for that could be for disqualification is question 12, which is for consistency with other plans. This question asks your agency to describe how the project is consistent with the applicant's general plan and or any of the following. The California Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, the statewide trails plan, a city, county or regional master plan. Here we have a chart that assists you in understanding which plan may fit your project type. Starting at the top, we have the following. Does your trail project connect neighborhoods to homes, schools, and workplaces? If yes, you will then refer to the California's 2021 to 2025 statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. If your trail does not meet the criteria above, we would want to know if the project will provide trail users with easily accessible trails and accurate information on trail locations and conditions. If your project does fit that criteria, then you would refer to the California Trails Plan. If not, then we have one last question for you, which is, will the project provide the maximum opportunities for the public use of trails by encouraging the appropriate expansion of multi-use trails? If you answer yes to this selection, then you're going to refer again to the California Trails Plan. If your project does not meet this criteria, please look into your city, county, or regional master plans. Uh, more than likely, your project will be consistent with an internal plan your agency may have, and it is important to refer to that plan in your narrative. If for some reason your agency does not have any plans, it will likely not be eligible for the RTP program. Next slide, please. 
All right, so now we're going to go over federal highway requirements um, for the RTB program. I know we have a couple questions in the chat in regards to um, so to be eligible for our side of the house, it does uh, for our program, it has to have an OHV nexus. So um, the primary function uh, must be OHV. Now you can have other user types that uh, use the trails. For example, we have ground operations that is for a trail and then we have other main for new main motorized, but you have your motorcycles, your hikers and hikers and equestrian users that do use it. But the primary function must be OHV. So to be eligible for our program on our side would be has to have an OHV nexus. If there is no OHV nexus, there is an RTP program for you. It would be on the non motorized side. And yes, they're anticipating doing a, a cycle in the fall of 2025. That's their next anticipated cycle. All right, so we got four uh, requirements here we're going to go over. Your project must be compliant with the National Environmental Policy Act or NEPA. This is to be completed prior to the application deadline. It would only focus uh, only for those projects on federal lands. Agency projects that are not on federal lands will not uh, will need to comply with CEQA. So no NEPA, but CEQA. And Caltrans will work with your agency in verifying CEQA compliance prior to the execution of your project agreement. And so you don't need to do that prior to submitting your application. Um, if your project is recommended for funding, um, at that point, call, Caltrans will work with you to verifying CEQA. All right, for those agencies who applied for the G24 Grants and Cooperative Agreements Program, your project has already been reviewed for CEQA requirements. So your Caltrans reviewed should be pretty quick. So that's a good thing. Number two, National Historic Preservation Act. There is a form in the application your agency must complete in order to submit your application, and that will cover that requirement. So it'll be something you guys fill out a part of your application. Number three, your project shall be listed on either the State Transportation Improvement Plan, known as STIP, or your local transportation improvement plan. The division will be responsible for this task and work with Caltrans to complete it. So this is something that your agency um, will not have to do to submit before application. Uh, if your project is recommended, the division and working with Caltrans will get you unlisted on the STIP or TIP. And we might have some questions for you for information that we need. Uh, the last one is specific for acquisition projects only. So this is an appraisal that conforms to the uniform appraisal standards for the federal land acquisitions is required. Next slide, please. OK, now that we have taken some time to go over the application questions in federal highway requirements, we have our application checklist. We also have a detailed version of this checklist on our division website under the recreational Recreational Trails Program tab. Some of these items are project specific, so please be sure to check out our fact sheet and the procedural guide on our division website. Next slide, please. All right, match. Match is a little different for RTP. So the Recreational Tra Trails Program requires a match per contribution of 12% or higher. An agency can submit more than a minimum required amount but does not earn additional points. So uh, if you're familiar with our grants program, if you go, our minimum is 25, we give bonus points, uh, additional points to your application if you provide more than that. This is just 12%. If you go over, that's your choice to go over. There's no benefit uh, in regards to scoring for you. Unlike the GCA program, Federal Highways is precise and will go down to the decimal. The match percentage is based on the match percentage submitted in your application's project cost estimate. So what is different about match percentage and how it applies to your payment request for this program compared to our GCA program? In all payment requests submitted, they must have the exact match percentage stated in your project cost estimate. So if you put in there, so we have an example is 12.014 number, number, number. That is what Federal Highways is looking for you to submit for match. And that means on every payment request, you must submit match with it. So you can't, uh, we have agencies that typically do grant reimbursement for the first two payment requests, let's say. And then the last payment request, they can provide all the match for the project and they can loot it in their last payment request. That will be denied by Federal Highways. Every payment request must have match included and it must match the percentage stated in your project cost estimate so that uh it will be 
something that you have to pay attention to if you're going that way. We'll cover payment requests later in the presentation. So if you have any questions specifically about payment requests, please hold them until then, as we may address your questions in the later presentation. talked about. So we just really want to emphasize to you that you have to submit what you state in your project cost estimate, which is different from what we, we actually do in our GCA program, where we recommend provide some extra match in case we throw something out because it's not eligible as an expense. We have something to play with. This program does not go that way. You have to make sure you provide exactly what is stated. Next slide, please. Okay. So we're going to quickly cover some of the eligible sources for match with RTP. These include state, local, and private funds. Also includes state grant funds, general funds, and bonds. Additionally, match may be submitted via donated materials and supplies, the value of donated land, and other federal funds. It is also very important to mention, but the RTP funds can be used for the GCA program as project match. So if you so have what, a, oh sorry Maddie go ahead no please go on so what Maddie's saying there is that if you have a current grant with our uh, grants and cooperative agreements program and you guys are doing the same thing so let's let's say it's ground operations you can use expenses covered that are in the GCA program that you got reimbursed grant dollars for and use those as a match contribution for your RTP and vice versa so RTP. You're doing in ground ops there. You're submitting that bill was paid by federal funds and it's showing as match on our end. The thing that you really have to make sure is you're good with your uh, paper, uh, your record keeping and not submitting two things that are the same to get actual grant dollars reimbursed. We are we can't pay for the same thing twice with actual months funds going out. So uh, we do pay attention to that as uh, grant administrators uh, who are looking at the payment request. They are going to look to verify that we're not paying for double dipping and things are getting paid twice. But just really, if you're going to look to do that. So I know we've had, um, we'll say the Tahoe National Forces example. They usually come in for a development project in our GCA program and they come in for the same development project in RTP. And then they marry them together where they have certain expenses that are going to be paid for RTP. They usually organize it so they might be covering contracts in one. And, and so it makes it clean for us. Um, and then they just submit it both ways. So it's a way to cover the match percentages, match requirements for two projects. So it's a cool benefit because federal dollars is allowed in our program as match. And the same as the other way, state dollars is allowed for RTP. So you can look to take advantage of that. You just really need to make sure you're being organized and paying attention to what you're submitting. And next slide, please. The payment request form is available. So this is our payment request. Uh, the payment request form is available on the division's website and in the RTP procedural guide. A sample is shown on the right side of the screen. For those familiar with our GCA program, this form is entirely different, and the form used in the GCA program cannot be used for RTP. So just making sure you're, you guys get into the habit of using the same thing, it, you can't. It has to be a separate form, different procedural guide, different uh, requirements. It's crucial that payment requests align with specific total in your agency's project cost estimate match breakdown. So we talked this about this. We're going to go over it one more time, which we enter into the Federal Highways RTP table for project management. So once your project is officially approved, we create this cool table uh, for Federal Highways to track information. We use it as well. Um, that keeps us to a certain standard that everybody's on. And on a payment request, there, if your agency is reimbursed $1,000 and your project's match percentage in your project cost estimate is 12%, you must submit a match of $120 for that project. They're going to go verify that match percentage off the RTP table that was created. It's important to hear to the match breakdown as Federal Highway Administration will reject your payment request if the match amount is incorrect. Additionally, Federal Highways does not allow, uh, additionally, Federal Highways does allow for advance payments. However, for advances, your, may, a, your agency must specify the total match that aligns with your match percentage you plan to spend on your first payment request. And your agency must provide all supporting documentation for that match 
before your agency will be able to receive its second advance. So that is something different. You can't just give a, a rough estimate. You need to be really exact of what your match is and breaking that down because federal highways will re request that information. Next slide, please. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, when submitting your payment request, you need to have some type of expenditure form uh, for uh, the details where the expenses occurred. Uh, beginning with the R24 grant cycle, we'll be using a grant expenditure form workbook similar to our GCA program expenditure workbook, but updated specifically for RTP. This RTP workbook will be available for download on our website. If you're unfamiliar with using the workbook, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to Maddie or the division for a tutorial to how to complete it. It does a really good job for us uh, giving category breakdowns where your totals were, and it helps us give that precise numbers that we're looking for that Federal Highways is also looking for. So it's a huge tool for us. Next slide, please. Okay. So we have our, the Recreational Trails Program requires a status report to be sent out every six months to agencies with active projects. The date the report is sent out is based on the day that our grant supervisor has signed and returned your agency's project agreement. The status report serves the same purpose as the project accomplishment report your agency would submit with your payment request in the GCA program. The status report provides the division and federal highways with an update on the grant scope expenditures incurred so far and activities undertaken during the project performance period. Reports should include photos and maps that support the progress made so far. Failure to return the status report within the 30-day period can result in payment requests and advances being frozen. Since you are completing this form every six months of your program. Next slide, please. All right, so this one is an active project. So in the past uh, unfortunately we've encountered issues with federal highways changing rt projects to inactive status due to financial inactivity so federal highways requires that all active projects submit at least one payment request per fiscal year failing to do so can lead to your project becoming inactive putting your funds at risk of being frozen and delayed Please note, submitting a status report or a project, a project accomplishment report does not count as project financial activity. Federal Highways wants to see how grant funds are being spent on your project. If your project becomes inactive, it will need to revisit certain parts of the application process before Federal Highways will reactivate it. Unfortunately, this has happened to us before, and the process is neither simple nor quick, and your project can be significantly affected if your project gets turned inactive for, inact, uh, for lack of financial activity, inactivity. Uh, to keep your project active, your agency must submit at least one payment request per fiscal year. There is no minimum amount required, but the payment request must adhere to specific match percentage breakdown, outline your project cost estimate. If your agency has multiple projects, ensure that payment request is submitted for each active project. Next slide, please. And here we have some tips to assist you through the RTP process. Um, this is including to review the RTP procedural guide. Um, it is there to help you. And we also have that fact sheet that breaks down the guide a little bit more in case there are any questions with the project. Uh, criteria questions. Um, it is also important to be aware of all federal highways rules and to follow the Made in America Act when purchasing equipment. And then for nonprofits to be uh, to to be aware of the bidding requirements for contract services. And always remember that the division is here to help throughout this whole process. So please feel free to give me a call or send an email to the division website or my email as well, and I can assist you. Next slide, In regards please. to the uh, uh, Sorry, bidding requirements, we've had issues with the federal highways, not issues, but just they are might request that information prior to payment on uh, advances or payment requests. If you're a nonprofit, they're going to look to make sure that things were bid out. And uh, the uh, that procedural guide we'll talk about in a little bit, it's a little on the outdated side. So please make sure, as uh, Maddie said, if you have questions about it, please feel free to reach out to the vision for help. Next slide, please.
Uh, no, in regards to Ashley had a good question. Do materials and supplies also subject to the Made in America requirement? No, for uh, RTP program, what we've been instructed, it's uh, equipment. So if you're looking to buy equipment, it needs to be meeting that requirement. All right, here are some resources to help you apply and manage your RTP project if your project is awarded. Recreational Trails Program Procedural Guide. This document can be found on the division's website under the RTP page. We are currently working with OGILS to update this guide as the current version was created in 2007 and is definitely in need of uh, some revisions. Uh, it is currently combined with the non-motorized projects. That's one thing that's kind of makes it complicated for us. Our plan is to create a separate OHV procedural guide while OGILS will develop their non-motorized procedural guide. The update is expected to happen in 2025 or 26. We're currently in the process of uh, putting our plans together and, and going, uh, getting it all ready for the Office of Administrative Law, uh, Services to review. Uh, next one, Federal Access Board for Outdoor Developed Resources. This document provides information on ADA accessibility requirements that your agency may want to include in your project. It can be found on the Access Board's website, and you also can check out our website for more details. RTP Division webpage. This page includes a program overview, procedural information, FAQs, and other RTP resources. Last but not least is Contact the Division. This program is unique and it's not something we offer regularly. Um, so that makes it so for your guys then it has that you're learning. You're just figuring out how it all works because it's not something you do on a yearly basis. And the same for us. We'll have to maybe uh, follow up with questions with uh, Federal Highways as well. But if you have any questions, need clarification, or require assistance with your application, please don't hesitate to reach out to the division. You can contact us by emailing the grants inbox at ohv.grants.parks.ca.gov or reaching out to Maddie directly. Next slide, please. Okay. And here we have an at a glance of the Recreational Trails Program grant cycle process. This process is historically longer than the GCA program and funding will likely be available in the fall of 2025. Um, beginning with September 3rd, this is when our applications open in Olga, and you will have until October 18th, 5 p.m. to submit your agency's final application. Once submitted, the division will conduct their review and announce our recommendations for funding on December 9th. At this time, your agency will work with Caltrans to assist in NEPA, the Transportation Improvement Plan, and Section 106. This can take a while, but we hope to have all applications complete the federal requirements by May of 2025. Following the completion of the federal requirements, Federal Highways will conduct a 30-day review of all recommended projects. Well, once they've completed this, they will then be able to begin issuing agencies their grant contracts. Again, these are just dates of an S or, sorry, these are just an estimation, and some things may take longer. And next slide, please. So again, I just want to emphasize uh, if you're looking for funds to be available to you quickly through the RTP program, that is not uh, <laughs> how this program rolls. It goes through a lot of different hands. Um, so again, we recommend projects in December, and then we'll start uh, Federal Highways will review those projects. And then once they're recommended, they will then move the next stage of doing Caltrans reviews uh, for NEPA and CEQA and uh, STIP and all that stuff. So uh, last time in 21, what we realized is we made the recommendations in January. Um, we started getting project agreements and appro formal approvals in June. That was the start of it. But most of them seemed like they were between June and August of when they would get their agreement. So it, it was kind of about a, a six to eight month span. So what's cool about it is remember, these projects can go up to three years for all project types. Um, so you can build it out to be a three year project. And if you end up do getting a grant and an agreement project during that time, it could be a source of match uh, for your RCP and uh, also a source of match for the GCA. So you can have them both running at the same time, doing the same type of project activities. All right. So that wraps up our R24 Recreational Trails Program Workshop. Thank you so much for joining us today to learn about the RTB program. We now have time to address questions that you may have. Um, so if you uh, have any questions, uh, look at the chat. We're pretty covered on that. Please raise your hand and we'll uh, unmute you so you can ask it.
All right. So our first hand raised is Brett Holman. Uh, Brett, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? We sure can. All right, perfect. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, let's see. So is there, there's no good or bad standing component to the RTP? And then if there is, does it affect the grants and cooperative agreements, good or bad standing? Uh, no, so the federal highways, it's, this is road program is run through federal highways. So they're completely separate in regards to um, good or not standing. So what you have in our program won't affect what's going on in the federal highways side and the okay. same way for federal highways won't affect us on that side. So, OK, and then just to be clear, is there's no public meeting component to RTP? Nope, uh, not a part of their application process. Um, they, yeah, I don't even think there's even points for additional questions uh, for if you did notify on that. So uh, no, no public notification on that project on that side. OK, and then for the three year, if we decide to go three year, that's just we just flip the switch in Olga for three year. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, so or? you would just stay you pretty much going to build your project cost estimate out to be a three year project. Um, okay. And then in your uh, project scope, you would state what you're looking to do, letting them know that like that would inform the reviewers that you're looking to do a longer project that helps us kind of figure out why your totals are where they're at. Yeah. Um, and then. What uh, agencies do if they know that they're looking to maybe anticipate getting funding from a GCA program down the road, um, they do say for a match, like we do anticipate match coming from the GCA program. That helps yep. the review teams know where you're looking to get that match. If you do that, just make sure that you do put a backup. If we don't get this match, it will be coming from another source and just kind of give us a heads up just because GCA programs not guaranteed funding. So we don't want you to bank on getting match from one project to pay for this one when you don't know if you're going to get it. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, our next hand raised was Dave Rohn. Dave, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. OK, so I have a couple of questions. One is. We talked about matching funds coming from the grant program, right? Division. How about if you're a federal agency, you're using federal dollars to match on the federal program? Is that acceptable? Good Anyways. question. So you have to have at least 5% of your match not come from federal dollars. So um, of that, so if you have 12%, you can have 7% coming for at least five of that percent has to come from non-federal dollars. So that's a good one. For example, the GCA program, volunteer time would count to make up that 5%, but you at least to have at least 5% of your match from non-federal dollars. Okay, so and and division division grants can make up that five percent if you need Correct. to. Correct. Yeah. Um. Uh. But okay. So, do does that match have to come from uh, similar grants? So in other words, like if you have a ground ops grant from from division ground ops grant to RTP grants, it has to be ground ops. You can't take from education and match a ground ops. It would be having to make sure that you're accomplishing the deliverables that are stated in your project accomplishment. And so they should be the OHB nexus should be the same. So if you're doing a ground operations grant, those are going to kind of cross over really easily. Uh, if you're having an education grant, you're trying to pull months from a ground ops. We would need to figure out how what you were doing that met the deliverables on that. And I know that education and things like that. Uh, you might have people out in the field educating and providing resources information. So you'd really need to make sure you're communicating to us so that we make sure that 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 what the activity you were doing was eligible to move over. OK, and next question is, um, according to the presentation you just gave, um, basically we're talking a year between funding um, from the application. Um, you have a you know, a month to do the application and then you really don't look for funding it for a year later. Yeah, um, if you're looking at it from September to September, that's kind of like the where we anticipate the max being. Again, we had some project, the majority of them were done by June to July with a couple falling into August. Um, it just, there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot, of, a lot of hands in the cookie jar in this one. So it does go from one person to the next person. And so it does take some time. Okay, and then... Um, you talked about RTP being a three-year grant. If you run a three-year grant, you can match individual each individual ground ops grant. You can use as matching funds for those three years if you get 
a ground ops yeah. grant from the division. Yes, you can. You can build it that way. And again, same thing as I stated before, just make sure if you are, you're stating that you're planning to use uh, state funding through the grants and cooperative agreements program. You want to give us a contingency of if you don't get awarded, what's going to make up that match that you're doing, especially as you as a federal agency, because we know that you have to have that 5% contribution non from non federal funds. OK, and my next one is, is this Olga interface the exact same one for the grant program or is it a separate interface? It's going to look very similar in regards to a lot of the stuff that you're doing, especially with the project cost estimate. The evaluation criteria questions are completely separate and different, so that's not going to look the same. Um, if you just but do we access paper, Olga the same way? Yeah, accessing Olga, yes, all that's the same. So, so you just go into Olga and then you the um, you have to list yourself as project director and everything, or if I'm listed already, does that carry over? You would have to submit your project director request for the RCP program, and so then that will associate your account uh, once you're approved to be the project director of the RTP project. So starting next Tuesday, when the grant cycle opens, you can submit those requests and we can look to approve them. Um, but everything else procedurally wise is the same. There's just make sure you're hitting RT24. I think that's what it is. Or it's RP. What's the do you remember what the acronym is for it in Olga, Maddie? Um, it is RT24. Yeah, okay. you'll be hitting RT24. Don't click any GCAs. <laughs> okay, and when you're signing up for this, I, I'm asking these because I have I've never done an RTB, but I've done a lot of yep. the other grants. <laughs> is when you sign up for that and you're listing everything, you have the same thing. You have a signing official. You have uh, grant administrators. Same type of thing. Yep, you all that's the people. same. We we and, copied and over a, all that procedurally is the same. And each one of those people have to sign up and get their own account to to access. They would currently have an account if they have one for GCA. So if they have an OGA account, that would work for this one. You would just as the project director need to sign them to this project specifically. OK. Thank you very much. Dave, it's nice seeing you. When do you officially retire? December 31st. Oh, we're coming down the final uh, final way here. <laughs> By the way, I this is the habit. I was really tempted to show up on the twenty five workload just to harass <laughs> you, but you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, no. Nice having you here, sir. Well, I won't well, be. I won't be an official employee then. I'll be a, a civilian. <laughs> we'll take your face, Dave, any day. We'll take uh, your face. Just, just because you have one more year to pick on me, I understand these things. All right. Uh, All right our bye. next. Bye. Our next question is from Gordon Stark. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Gordon. Hi, thanks for the presentation. My mm -hmm. question is um, whether the grant contract being awarded, what the uh, whether it be a one year or three year with RTP, uh, what is the um, when does that start date for that the year to be in or the three okay. years? That's a very good question. So the official start date um, is a little different from our GCA program where you say what date you want to start. Federal Highways does it whenever they officially give approval. That is actually your first day of the project. So um, let's say they go and they approve it July 17th of 2024. Once we get that form back for them saying it's approved, it would be July 17th, 2024. And you could start charging the program at that point from that date. Uh, we still need to then finalize the official project agreement uh, because once we get approval, then we create the contract from it. But yes, the start date is determined when Federal Highways officially approves the project. Well, thank you. All right, um, our next question is Michelle Abramson. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, everybody, and uh, thank you for putting on this workshop. Um, I'm just asking for some more clarity on what you briefly mentioned, the uh, federal requirements um, listed. It says on your website that it would be after we would be recommended for funding, we would need to make sure we are on the state transportation improvement plan. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, so that will be something that actually we do as a division that's a part of our requirements. Um, we reach out to Caltrans. So um, they then will give us the coordinators of each local county to then get you added to the S-TIP or TIP. 
Um, we just don't do that until we recommend the projects for federal highways. And then they tell us to move forward just because it is a process to kind of get them on there. Right. And that's one of the reasons for the delays. It all depends on your local counties of when they post their tips and S tips. Some do it on a quarterly basis, some do it on a monthly basis. And so it really just has a, <laughs> it all kind of depends on the local areas, but Caltrans right. is our main contact. And then they reach out, help us connect to who we need to get it posted with. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that answers my second question was be how how would I start doing that? Um, yeah, so, so we you. take care of that. Um, we might reach out to you for some additional information that the local um, STIP and TIP coordinators might ask us. But for the most part, it's all the stuff that's in your applications. Um, and that's one thing that we kind of hit with uh, this past year when we had a grantee that tried modifying a grant. If you like they tried doing just a, a, a scope change. Um, those kind of scope changes and things like that are usually easy in our GCA program because we're the one approving it. But with federal highways, it works different. They have to remove those scope chains, and it might be something that they send back to be posted in a tip, depending how much changes you're making. So, for example, we had a project that wanted was going to build two bridges, and then they were going to build one bridge, and they were going to do something else that was different because of the way the project changed over three years. That was something that they said that we'd have to go back to the S tip to post just because we want they needed to inform the public of the change. Got it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That was our last hand raise. So we'll go for one quick go around if anyone else has questions. It's your last call. No, I'm you can always email us. Yes. No, uh, it's not the last chance. We're here. Definitely, if you're going through your application, it is going to be different. Um, I definitely think if you've worked on a GCA program and you've worked uh, on your current application, you can copy a lot of those things out. You won't have the direct copy feature like you do for our program where you can kind of just throw it all in. You're going to have to kind of look at a PDF. But a lot of that information you wrote for those applications are very something that you can apply for this one. It's this the evaluation criteria questions are completely different um, on that side. And the big thing with those is really look at the bullet points of the tips that they suggest. That's going to help build up uh, your arguments uh, and your suggested narrative for getting the score that you're giving yourself. Um, so the review teams do use those uh, for consideration for how they award the points. So. All right, that's it, everybody. Huh? Well, thank you for everyone who's joined. We sat around an hour and we rocked it. Maddie, we did great. 1055. Thank we nailed you. It. Uh, if you, uh, this will be posted on our resources page. So uh, for RTP, so it'll be on the RTP page. If you want to refer to it later, you can definitely check it out then. And again, if you have any questions, please feel to reach out. The grant cycle will be starting September 3rd of next week, which is Tuesday. Um, to start your application, remember, you do need to submit a project director request in Olga. So it's going to be on the left side of your home screen. It says project director request. Click on that, follow the steps, and then it will be approved and you're on your way. All right. Thank you. I want, hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.